Hello, let's do a Lightning Whirlwind Charge Release Critical Seasonal Stunner build. On this one, let's focus on armor and dodge. The most important thing to note is that Charge Release hits twice. However, after Season 3 changes, they made it so first hit is affected by projectile damage and second hit by area damage. After this change, Charge Release lost a little bit of damage, but that's not a big of a deal because it's still a strong choice for a build and scales really good into the late game. So let's get into it. Skill bar should look something like this, just remember to use correct uh, colors for the links. So let's start with the whirlwind, it's convert lightning damage, additional lightning damage, quick attack, confidence and savagery, trigger link uh, spell activation while channeling, into charge release, with additional lightning damage, projectile acceleration, AV effect, fine weakness and winding wind, you can use acceleration or preserve mana instead of winding wind. Attack enhances Vital Strike, but you can use Release Element, however Vital Strike is going to be much stronger early into the game. With Enhance Effect, Increased Duration and Time Acceleration. F movement abilities are Leap Attack and Roll with Use Count and Disarm. Defense enhances Sip on Life with Time Acceleration and Increased Duration. Shadow Provocation is for Arm Amplification, so it's Defensive Option. You can use Offensive Option, something like Illusion Access which are converted into fire with extract energy link rune just for big damage increase shuttle provocation with enhanced effect increased duration lingering shout hushed shout and buff activation when hit shot of justice is basically optional he in here it's going to remove the hard crowd control you can use it with buff activation move on crowd control for attack seal you can use seal of condensed elements or critical chance depending on what you need the most for defense enhance is enduring pain just for some armor stacks and some damage. Charms and blessings. So you want to start the caster and then go into Acuban. These two choices are easy. The third and fourth blessing you can go for Leo and Alyssa. Projectile damage and area damage is only gonna work on charge release. It's not gonna work on whirlwind. Keep that in mind. For the charms you want to look for critical damage, critical rate, those are the main two mods that you always want to get. After that it's up to you. You can get some damage multiplier, you can get some maximized damage on hit, you can get some HPs or some resistances depending on what you need the most. Relics. You can start with the Acuban one and pick up Lightning Orb for the active skill with damage amplification and skill rune cooldown recovery speed. Lightning Orb is going to be strong early into the game when you don't have much damage. It's going to be decent amount of damage only from the Lightning Orb. For the passive effect, you can pick up Lightning Penetration and some Lightning Damage. Then you can go into Sevda. You will want to switch active skill to Sevda when you start doing a little bit more damage and an elemental damage amplification or damages the Lightning Orb. With that one, you want to use skill room cooldown recovery speed with mental stimulation effect. For the passive effect, you can go for chaos resistance. This is a really nice one. For the third one, I suggest to go for speaker. This one will give you maximized damage. Even if uh, physical damage doesn't work, but double maximized damage on hit, it's going to increase your damage by quite a bit. Or you can go into level for attack speed and movement speed of location. For the last one, I suggest to get Boreal, as you can only have 15 levels on that one, so you're only gonna benefit from, from the first passive effect. In this case, it's HP. Zodiacs. So you want always to spend your points first onto the specializations. First spec opens up and you spend 22 points, second spec 45, and third spec 70. This time we start with Afros, Explorer, Gem, Perla, Petal, first spec is Dawn, you can spec into Brilliance, but Brilliance doesn't have as much utility early, but later in the game you will want to spec into Brilliance because it has more damage, 
But on Dawn 1, you want to pick up Uplift, Overpower, and Strike Damage Amplification. You're gonna get two extra points in here when you finish the Green Quest in Saluto. After that, you can pick up Convert Mana. But Convert Mana is gonna leech your HP. So you want to pick up some kind of HP region, which you can do in Spec 3. Contrast. Nemera. Frost is optional one, and you want to pick up every single elemental damage node in here, but only do that when you don't have to spend your points anywhere else. Otherwise, this is not a good choice. Convection. This is basically a defensive option. If you don't need defenses, you can skip this one. Hail is spec 2. You want to go into Tempest, Sharpness, and then Strength Damage Amplification. After you get two extra points from the quests in Saluto, you can remove sharpness and spec into Elemental Observer. Scent. Artemis is optional one before specialization 3. In order to keep your convert mana, you get 20 HP on kill. Deadly Poison. Maggot is optional one. If you have Strength, Dexterity and Intelligence 200 or more, you can pick up this node. Or you can pick up area damage, projectile damage. Those two are gonna work on charge release and you can pick up melee damage. And this one is gonna work on whirlwind. Plague. Pharma is optional one for HP amplification if you need it. Hunter. Blacksmith. This one is optional if you need more defenses. Perfect dodge is nice as it gives you 5% HP recovery upon perfect dodge. And uh, critical damage taking decrease is a nice one, but not good early, as early it's already hard to keep your resistances and armor at cap. So for this one, you need to, you want to wait for a little bit, but this is a nice mode, nice node. Sympathy is the third spec. Here you want to pick up HP absorb limit and HP absorb on hit. Firstly. With this you can remove Artemis and you will be able to sustain your HP even if you have Convert Mana with this one. Then into Capable, into Strength Damage Amplification. And you can choose Attack Speed Amplification or just pick up HP Amplification. And Mold. Itemization. So for any critical build that you do, you always want to find a weapon that has the highest critical rate depending on the build that you're using. In this case, we're gonna use two-handed sword that has base critical rate of 13 and has implicit equipped weapon range. For the affixes, you want to roll mainly the gear critical rate. This is what you focus the first on. After that, you can get critical damage, some lightning damage slats, weapon attack damage multipliers, weapon range, and weapon speed. For the neck, you want to use critical damage implicit neck. You can get some lightning damage flat, elemental damage multiplier. Then it's up to you. You can pick up some resistances that you need, hit rate, some stats, and HP on the prefix. For the ring, you want attack critical rate implicit. On that, you want to get, again, attack critical rate, the main one. After that, critical damage, attack speed, elemental damage multiplier. And after that, it's up to you. Whatever resistances you need the most, or on or HPs on the prefix. For the equipment, for the body, you want to use uh, gear armor multiplier. This is the main one. Then some HPs. After that, on the suffix is up to you. maybe chaos resist, some 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 elemental resistances, and hit rate if you need a little bit of that. The main difference on the boots is that you want to always roll movement speed increase. This is the main one. After that, you can pick up any resistances. If you want offensive rolls, you can pick up projectile damage multiplier. If you are going to use armor boots, it's going to be melee damage multiplier, which is not going to work for you. It's only going to work on whirlwind, but you kind of want to increase damage on your charge release. On the suffix part, it's up to you. Case resistances, elemental resistances, or just hit rate. Upgrades in the skill board should look something like this. Let's start with the whirlwind. You want to awaken it into origin. Then use convert lightning damage. Grand approach, fighting spirit, and quick attack. 
For Chargelis, you want to awaken into source for projectile counts, then use concentrated area damage, strike, mana storm, and projectile acceleration. If you are using dodge in your build, you can use spot weakness. If you are not using dodge and you need amplification, you can use elemental damage jump. In the middle, you can keep fine weakness for some critical rate. Another difference in here is release element. You can use, you can start using that when you get a little bit of crit and a little bit of crit rate on your build, because that's gonna decrease the vital strike efficiency. But you can test that in training arena. When you can manage to get your release element duration to about seven seconds and cool down to thirteen or fifteen, you can start using decrease duration. Decrease duration should be damage increase. If not, if you test it and you don't get damage increase, don't use it. But if you do, you can also use Seal of Striking, awaken it into Rapid Seal to make it like an extra attack enhance and link it with Decrease Duration. If Decrease Duration doesn't give you damage, you can use Totem Activation when using Enhance Skill, link it with Release Element and link it with Weaken Totem and awaken Weaken Totem into source for more elemental damage when the totem dies. Another difference in here is uh, buff activation when using movement skill that's linked to penetrating slash and shadow provocation. You want to awaken your pen slash into extra use count that is verity and only use this if your shadow provocation uptime is 100%. Basically you need to increase the shout duration higher than the cooldown is. Another thing in here is Whale of Protection that decreases projectile damage taken and this is the only way to get a decent amount of projectile damage decrease. But remember you want to use Wine Whale, so in order to check which whale are you using, just, take, just check in your buff UI near the HP. Another difference in here is Seal of Dodge. You don't have to seal, use Seal of Dodge, you can use Seal of Physical Domain, Elemental Domain, or just some Chaos or Elemental res Resistances, whatever defensive skill you need the most. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can ask them on YouTube or find me on Twitch. I'm streaming every day. If not, have a nice day, have a nice grind, and GG's. See you next time.